Hi everyone, uh, my name is Adrian Wolf and I'm giving you a presentation today on practical strength training for triathletes. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself first. Um, so I recently uh, earned my uh, master's degree in kinesiology from the University of Illinois at Chicago. Um, this was uh, just in uh, December of 2019. And then I moved out to uh, Las Vegas uh, shortly after that to begin my uh, coaching business. Um, I'm certified through the National Strength Conditioning Association, um, both as a certified strength conditioning specialist and a certified personal trainer. Uh, I am also USAT level one certified. I earned my certification last um, a few months ago in uh, Tempe, Arizona. Um, I went there to uh, get the certification. Um, and uh, since 2017, I've coached uh, quite a few people, everybody from the uh, general population to uh, endurance athletes, um, working with them on uh, functional fitness just for life, and also endurance athletes, uh, helping them improve their running technique mostly, training them for uh, triathlons of various distances, running races, things like that. I also uh, compete myself in. Um, running triathlon and obstacle course events. Uh, I've completed um, a whole bunch of shorter distance triathlons and also all the way up to uh, two Ironman triathlons. Um, I just did my last one uh, last year, 2019 in Wisconsin. Um, and uh, running, I, my, my background uh, is originally in running. Um, that's why I'm so passionate about teaching running technique. Um, so I started uh, my running experience back in 2008, uh, training for my first uh, marathon, did Chicago in 2008 and 2009, and it kind of took off from there. I took up the triathlon shortly after that, fell in love with it, and um, I have quite a uh, extensive background in strength training as well um, through the NSCA, which is why I'm giving this presentation uh, today uh, to everybody. So I really see uh, the importance uh, of strength training in in endurance athletes um, training program, you know, not just for myself, um, but for everybody. Uh, it definitely has a place. And uh, I will talk to you about that today. So uh, moving on. Um, this is the webinar overview. So I'm going to give a little bit of rationale for strength training first, right? So many of you are wonder wondering, um, you know, why strength training? Um, you know, I get that question a lot. Everybody kind of wonders it. Um, you know, what purpose does it really have in a endurance athletes training program? So we'll talk about that a little bit. We'll delve into just a little bit of the research. Um, and uh, then from there, I'm going to give you some practical exercises that you can start implementing uh, coaches with your athletes and athletes for yourselves. Um, so uh, I'll show you a few exercises for swimming, cycling, and running. Um, and it's important to note as we go through this, um, I'm only giving three exercises for each. We only have a certain amount of time for this. Uh, just know that there are hundreds upon hundreds of exercises that you could be doing. Um, but the ones I'm going to be sharing with you today are my personal favorite. And I believe that they should have a place in everybody's training program as I've found them to be very effective, um, not just uh, for injury prevention, but also to help improve performance too. Uh, we'll finish up with a little bit of uh, practical application. I'll show you how to uh, structure a, um, a, a workout. Um, and then from there, we'll uh, close up with a summary about everything that I've talked to you about today. So um, let's go ahead and dive into it. So the rationale for strength training. Um, so the goal of strength training is threefold, right? So first is to facilitate long-term development of the athlete, right? So coaches, when you're coaching your athletes, right, it's important to start implementing this stuff because it's really going to help them um, with injury prevention and to be able to do this sport for a longer period of time, right? To keep them durable, okay? Um, and then also to maximize competition performance, of course, all right? We all want to race better, okay? We all want to implement certain strategies in order to race better, okay? And strength training is one of them. 
Um, and then also the huge thing is, and probably my number one reason for strength training um, and why I have it in italics here is to limit the risk of injuries, right? So I don't care how good an athlete you are, if you are injured, you're not racing. If you're not racing, you're not achieving what you want to achieve, right? So that's, that's the, uh, the biggest reason, all right, for me, as far as um, the importance of strength training, all right? Um, so moving on, it should be periodized, all right, to complement your endurance training. Now, periodization is a huge topic and it's beyond the scope of this webinar, so I'm not gonna get into it. Uh, however, if you do have additional questions about it, uh, you can always uh, feel free to reach out and email me. I'd be more than happy to talk to you about it. Also, one of the research articles I've included in the references of this webinar shows you a practical approach of how to periodize for an endurance athlete. All right, so one of these studies, all right, it's relatively recent, just 2019, just recently published. Um, it was a review article, all right, that reviewed a whole bunch of previous studies on strength training for a variety of different endurance athletes. And uh, it's been repeatedly shown to have many benefits in performance, right? So some of these benefits are increased propulsive force in the water, right? Just being able to pull that water with a lot more force, okay? Increase your stroke length and stroke rate, right? For swimmers. Uh, decrease oxygen uptake, heart rate, blood lactate, and rating of perceived exertion during prolonged cycling for uh, uh, long distance cyclists, right? So if you're doing the same amount of work at a lesser heart rate, at a lesser oxygen uptake, right? You're more efficient. If you don't have as much blood lactate building up at that particular, um, at that particular effort, you're staying more aerobic versus anaerobic, right? So it's been shown to do that. Also increasing running economy and uh, maximal aerobic velocity. Okay, so at VO2 max, how fast can you run? Um, increased neuromuscular efficiency. So the, um, the way your brain tells your muscles to fire and in which order, right, is improved with uh, strength training. Also delayed activation of type two fibers, all right? If you guys are familiar with type one versus type two fibers, type two fibers are um, your stronger fibers, but they're a lot more fatigable, okay? So if you do strength training, uh, it has been shown to, um, you can uh, produce more force and work harder um, without activating those type two fibers too early. So your fatigue resistance is going to be more, essentially. Um, and also conversion of type 2X to more fatigue resistant type 2A fibers. So if you guys are familiar with the three different types of muscle fibers, type 2X are your strong, powerful ones. Type 1s are the ones that we as endurance athletes have a lot of. Those are your high endurance ones, really fatigue resistant. And then type 2A, those are kind of like somewhere in between, right? So if you have more type 2A, they're more fatigue resistant. You could go longer using those. but um, uh, you can't produce as much power. So they're kind of like right in the middle there. Okay. So it's more beneficial to have more type two fibers, uh, type two, a fibers there as well. All right. And all of these have been seen, right. All these benefits have been seen with no detrimental effects to VO2 max. All right. That's what these studies show. Okay. So without getting too deep into the science, all right, that is the scientific rationale for why strength training is so important. Okay, um, and you can always look into this uh, review article and uh, check it out for yourself. It's in the references. So moving on uh, to the fun exercises. Okay, so once again, these are my exercises of choice. There are many, but I will show you a few. All right, so for swimming. Okay, so we have a lot of pulling in swimming. If you could produce more force while pulling, um, then you will perform better. All right, so this is a basic bent over row exercise to where I hinge over, all right, with my back about uh, parallel to the ground, and I'm going to go ahead and pull those dumbbells up, okay, um, bringing those elbows up nice and high, keeping the weights close to my rib cage. So I'm going to minimize this real quick. I'll show you a quick video of what the exercise looks like. Here's a bent over row. So going back, 
Okay. So next exercise is arm haulers, right? Uh, you may or may not have seen this one, right? So this can also be used as a uh, mobility exercise, a warm up exercise, but it can also be very, very taxing on the rotator cuff, on your upper back muscles. And I love it, right? This exercise is awesome, all right? So what you're essentially doing is um, face down on the floor, you're starting with your arms, your shoulders in just about max internal rotation as you could get them on your lower back. You're straining out your arms out to the side. Then when your arms are in a T position to the side, you're externally rotating your arms, your shoulders to where your thumbs are up towards the sky. And then you're finishing up all the way up overhead um, with your thumbs up towards the sky. And then you basically reverse the movement going about two, three seconds up, two, three seconds back down. Um, this one can really start to burn, right? So during this, uh, you really want to make sure you're squeezing your shoulder blades together nice and tight. Okay, so I'm going to minimize this once again. I'm going to show you this exercise. So this is what it looks like starting here on the lower back. I'm going to bring the arms out to the side, rotate all the way up overhead and all the way back down. All right, so as you're doing this, be very careful, all right, to not really try hard not to shrug your shoulders up too high, all right? So that's a little bit too much recruitment of the upper trap muscles. What we wanna do is use a lot more of the rotator cuff, middle and lower traps and rhomboid muscles in between the shoulder blades. Next is WYs, all right? A similar exercise, except now we're, um, some of your athletes or athletes uh, yourselves, all right, you may not be strong enough at first to do very many reps uh, of this movement holding on to plates, okay? And that's okay. If you are not, all right, then start off without plates, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm starting off with um, my uh, arms in external rotation here, pinching and squeezing the shoulder blades together here. I'm pressing the weights up overhead and I'm bringing them back down. So let me show you a video of this one. And this is what it looks like, pressing up overhead and back down. Okay. So moving on to cycling exercises. Bulgarian split squats. All right, if you guys have not heard of this one, I would definitely put it in your uh, repertoire for um, strength training. Okay, so single leg movements are completely different from uh, bilateral movements, right? So you could be very, very strong squatting with both legs, but then you put it on one leg and, you know, things <laughs> start not going so well, okay? So um, if you're new to this exercise, definitely do it without weights at first. Then you could do it with weights holding on to each one um, on the side or holding it up here uh, close to your chest. There's so many ways of doing them, right? But um, when you do this, you want to place the bottom or the, or the top of your foot on the bench and you want to come down your knee, your back knee doesn't need to touch the ground. Uh, just get as close to a 90 degree bend in that front knee as possible, keeping your chest up nice and tall. And you're repeating this for reps. Now, when I work with athletes a lot, what I see is them really using this back leg because they're weak on this front leg. Okay. So they try to push up with this back leg and we want to minimize that. Okay, so we want most of the work, if not all of it, to come from that front leg. Otherwise, we're defeating the purpose of the exercise. So this exercise looks like this. This is my starting position, and I'm taking you through a few reps there. All right, so down and all the way up. Okay, so moving on. All right, front planks. Why front planks? Because the cycling event is the longest event in the triathlon, okay? And if you have a weak core, you are going to suffer on the bike, okay? So front planks is a very, very um, basic, simple exercise, but it is very, very effective and you can make it very hard uh, for yourself, right? All you gotta do is go longer or put some weight on your back, all right? But especially for Ironman distance triathletes, all right, when you're in this position, all right, hunched over position in your aero bars, all right, this mimics that position very well. And if you're getting tired, if your back is starting to hurt, all right, you need to have front planks in your strength training routine, 
Okay, so I don't have a video for this one. This is what it looks like. All right, um, you wanna keep your back nice and flat. I do have my knees a little bit lower than they should be. Ideally, uh, the knees should be completely locked out and straight. All right, but um, you know, and yeah, it is what it is <laughs> for this one. So I need to correct that a little bit. So uh, you can also make it harder for yourself by pushing your elbows forward, all right, and making that lever arm a lot uh, more difficult for you to hold. Okay, so that's front planks. And next one is plank get-ups. All right, so going from that front plank position and pressing up into a push-up and going back down. All right, why? Because how many times do you get up out of your arrow bars to ride hills or to uh, get some water or, you know, especially you long course athletes, okay? So it mimic, mimics that position as well. You got to have the strength to be able to do that a lot over and over and over, okay? So let me show you what this one looks like. Plank get up. Up and down, one arm at a time, making sure you're minimizing any rotation from the trunk. All right, and you want to keep that back as flat as possible. All right, so that is the plank get up there. Okay, moving on. Exercises for running. Okay, so one of my favorites, the Captain Morgan. All right, if you have IT band syndrome, this is a very good one for you. All right, so uh, there is no video for this one. It's pretty self-explanatory. So what I'm doing here is I'm standing up nice and tall. I'm gonna balance on one foot. As I do, I'm pushing, if you could see here, I'm pushing this leg into the wall. What that is going to do is create a force that drives my hip out this way, all right? So it's forcing this glute over here, all right? Gluteus medius, all right, to really um, be activated, all right? So it's forcing you to stay up nice and tall. And the harder you push, the harder you're gonna to have to drive through this heel to keep that glute activated, all right? So you can start feeling a burn pretty quickly there with this one, all right? So you hold this for time, essentially. Hold it for time, okay? And then uh, you do the same thing on the other side. Just make sure you keep a good posture. You're driving up through this bottom heel right here, all right? And you're feeling the burn in the back side of the hip over here where the glute medius is. Moving on. Uh, pal off hold lunges. Okay, this is a little bit more of a advanced exercise. Um, this resistance band can be tough. Okay, so what I'm doing here is, this is my starting position. All right, so I'm gonna have the band latched onto a squat rack or some sort of stable surface. For hugging it to my chest, I'm gonna go ahead and press out. As I press out, the resistance from the band is gonna pull me this way, okay? So what I have to do is I have to really squeeze, all right, <clears throat> um, and make sure I have a good, strong, stable core in my obliques, all right, uh, my transverse abdominis, all right, that's your really, really deep core muscle, or right? we have multiple layers of core muscles, if you did not know, and they're all being used in this exercise to make sure you're not rotating in this direction and to make sure you're staying nice and upright. Okay, so after I press out, I'm gonna keep my arms locked out the whole time and I'm gonna go ahead and do alternating lunges or all lunges on one leg, then all lunges on the other leg. As you come forward, notice the band is gonna to wanna to pull you even more. So you gotta keep your arms in line with your shoulders here, okay? So this is a very demanding exercise. Let me show you what it looks like here, full speed. So this is my starting position. I'm gonna press out and I'm gonna hold. And I'm gonna go ahead and do lunges. All right, so one more time, press out, hold, and do your lunges. Okay. So one more exercise for you guys. Lunge step throughs, okay? So, um, Consider that uh, regular lunge, all right? And what you're doing here is you're bypassing this position. So this is a starting position. I'm gonna go ahead and do a backwards lunge. And then straight from there, I'm gonna push back up, but instead of coming back up to this starting position, I'm bypassing it nice and tall, and I'm moving straight into a front lunge. And then from the front lunge, 
coming straight back to the back lunge, right? So back and forth like that, okay? So this is a very effective exercise for running because running, right, is all single leg, right? If you didn't know that, it's all single leg. It's just a controlled fall from one leg to the other. And you need to be able to what's called eccentrically, all right, control, all right, this force coming back and coming forward, all right, uh, with that single leg. And this uh, exercise is really going to help you do that a lot, all right? It's gonna help you stabilize your hip, uh, your knee, your foot, everything. Okay, so this is what it looks like in full speed here. Stepping through and stepping back through, all right? So if you have, um, if your balance isn't that great, I would recommend just doing standard lunges first, alternating until your balance gets better and then you could go into lunge step throughs. All right, so that's all my videos. <clears throat> and those are some of my favorite exercises that you guys can start implementing, okay? So how do we implement them? Practical application, okay? So, Whenever you're programming strength training, whether athletes, whether you're doing it yourself or coaches, whether you're doing it for your athletes, just remember sports specific muscle groups, all right? You want to train the movements that are similar, all right, to your, um, uh, to your sport, okay? So swimming, cycling, running, all right? All those exercises were specific to those, okay? So consider and you know, maybe think about learning some anatomy and what the different muscle groups do and how they're involved in these certain sports and then choose exercises that are going to tax those same muscle groups in the same ways, okay? So in general, two to three times per week, depending on the time of the year, okay? So like I said, periodization is a pretty big deal. Um, you're going to do more or less strength training depending on which phase of training you're in. And uh, once again, that's beyond the scope of this webinar. If you have questions about that, please let me know. I'll point you in the right direction. Um, and these previous exercises I showed you, all right, they're very effective for injury prevention, for the foot, hip, core, and shoulder. All right, they're going to help build strength, endurance, stability, and neuromuscular coordination, all right? Um, so... In addition to this, two to three times per week, all right, depending on time of the year, when you're doing a specific workout, all right, shoot for two to three sets, okay? In the off season, you could do a few more sets, um, more like three or four, you know, depending, all right? These are very general recommendations, okay? But in addition to these two to three sets, it's important to consider your repetition ranges, all right? In general, 12 to 30 reps of a specific movement will train muscular endurance, okay? Then seven to 11 reps will train muscular hypertrophy. What that means is you're training to make your muscles bigger, all right? This is where I feel like a lot of endurance athletes and coaches get freaked out from strength training, all right? Just because you're doing seven to 11 reps of a movement does not mean your muscles are getting bigger, okay? You need to lift around 70 to 80 percent, all right, of your one repetition maximum for those seven to 11 reps for you to start building muscle, all right, to, to start really increasing muscle size, okay? So if I am doing those lunges or those um, Bulgarian split squats and I'm doing seven to 11 reps on each leg, but it's far from that 70 to 80% of the heaviest I can lift for that exercise, say it's like 40 to 50%, your muscle size is not going to increase that much, if at all, especially if you're doing endurance training along with that, okay? So this is the biggest thing, you know, I hear from uh, athletes and coaches, all right? They're afraid to get big. It, it's, yeah, it's true. It's something to be concerned about, especially when we want to be at a particular rate, race weight. But I feel like that concern is a little bit, unfounded, all right? If, um, if you're programming effectively and with periodization, okay? So that's my little soapbox about that. Then if you're training six or less repetitions for uh, you are building muscular strength, okay? Um, of course, if you're doing just six reps of an air squat without any weight, 
that's not gonna build very much muscular strength. You have to be lifting 85% or more, all right, of your one repetition maximum, all right, at, these, at this rep range to really, really build sufficient muscular strength, all right? But sufficient, it's kind of relative, all right? Uh, these are general recommendations, okay? So also, one more big thing, your technique is going to dictate your weight and repetitions used, all right? Coaches, if, look at their their back look at your athlete's back position um, what are their knees doing relative to their ankles right are they all over the place when they're doing their specific movements if so they need to be um, lifting less weights right with more control for these particular movements all right so athletes keep keep that in mind as well all right so if you're wobbly all over the place when you're doing a squat if your knees go in left, right, left, right, as you're going down into a squat, right? Consider doing an easier variation of that particular exercise, okay? That's how you do it safely, okay? And then I just wanna to touch on the big three lifts, all right? That's the back squat, deadlift, and bench press, all right? These definitely do have a place, all right, in um, programming. However, they need to be programmed very uh, carefully. All right, so they're very highly taxing on the central nervous system and your musculoskeletal system, all right, especially when done in high loads. Um, so there's period, periodization considerations, right, to keep in mind, all right. But uh, in general, right, if you're doing these lifts around three to five sets, all right, and if you're going with more reps, seven to 12, at a lighter to moderate uh, weight, this should be done uh, during the off season, all right, where you're not, because this is going to build a little bit more muscle, all right? So if you're in your off season, you don't have to worry too much about being too big or um, get, having your muscles being too big, all right? When you're actually in season in competition mode, I'd right, stick to less reps, less volume, all right? As your weight goes up, your volume, your overall um, repetitions, all right, should be reduced, okay? So less reps, six or less at heavier loads during the in season will help you maintain that strength once you build it from the off season. Okay, and here's a sample workout of what something would look like. Okay, so um, the, um, of course you, you will do some sort of warm up right before this. You're not just gonna jump straight into these exercises and start lifting a whole bunch of weight. Okay, so after your warm up, you're gonna do, oh, I'm sorry. I have no idea why that happened. Okay, it's gone now. All right, moving on. So two to three compound sets. A compound set is moving from one exercise to the next that's taxing similar muscle groups, right? Similar muscle groups. So Bulgarian split squats, those are gonna work the quads, hamstrings, and glutes a lot. So are the pull off hold lunges, but these are more taxing. So you could do a heavier weight here, four to six reps. Um, this slash here means, so this would be the left side, this would be the right side, four to six reps on each side, then straight from there, you're going into a set of pull off hold lunges, okay, 10 reps each side, all right, but it's a much lesser weight, you're just doing it body weight, it's a good way to get a little bit more volume, all right, and to uh, train those same muscle groups after they're a little bit fatigued, all right, from the uh, heavier workout or exercise there. Then from there, I'm gonna go into 30 seconds each side of a Captain Morgan, rest 130 to two minutes, all right, because um, this compound set is a little bit taxing for the legs, so you'll need a little bit more rest. Then once you complete that, you could go into something like a superset. A superset differs from a compound set in that you're working opposing muscle groups, okay? So push-ups, all right, we have a push-pull combo here. So you could do something like two to three supersets of 15 to 20 push-ups, moving straight into 12 to 15 bent over rows. And then you're gonna rest for 30 uh, seconds to a minute. And you have less rest here because I'm going for a little bit more muscular endurance. Whenever you're training muscular endurance, you want a little bit more rest, okay? And then finally, you can, uh, after you finish that, you can jump into something like a two to three circuits, all right, where you're just going from one exercise to the next. Pretty much the same thing, just different terminology. Um, of three to five arm, arm haulers, this would be three seconds up, three seconds down, 
All right, so when you're doing arm haulers, you're not just swinging your arms wildly <laughs> all over the place. You're actually controlling that movement up, controlling that movement down. Then you could do something like a front plank to tax the core a little bit, and then go back to the shoulders again, all right, for some WYs. Three seconds up, three seconds down, and then rest for one minute to 1.30, all right, kind of like in between uh, rest period there. So this is what a sample workout would look like. There's so many different ways you could structure workouts. So this is just one way there. All right, in summary, um, strength training, right? Properly integrated with endurance training throughout the racing season has been shown to reduce risk of injury, support long-term development of the athletes and improve race performance, which we all love and want, right? So these accessory exercises uh, that I've demonstrated, those should be used all year round, right? To keep triathletes strong, durable, and well-balanced. So the more technical and demanding lifts like the back squat, deadlift, and bench press, all right, those should definitely follow a periodization, periodized approach, right? To where you're actually working with a coach. If you don't understand periodization, all right, there's specific phases throughout your racing season all right, where you're going to program these lifts differently, right? And you have an annual training cycle for that, all right, in order for you to maximize your performance, okay? Um, when all else fails, there is no perfect program. I say again, there is no one perfect program. Everybody has individual needs, okay? So athletes, coaches, whenever you are programming strength training, follow principles rather than trying to to copy or create a perfect program, all right? So principles are progressive overload, all right? That means gradually increasing the load on the athlete, all right? So an example of that could be last weekend, I lifted, you know, a um, hundred, I did a hundred pounds back squat. And then the following week I did 110, you know, for the same amount of reps, that's progressive overload. Specificity, all right, be specific to your sport that you're training. Okay, so swimming, biking, running, or sorry, cycling, running. <laughs> and then variation, all right, so variety, okay? Variety is the spice of life, okay? So don't do one thing for too long, all right? This leads to burnout, this leads to injuries, okay? So if you're just doing the same movement um, for like 12 weeks straight, not varying the load, the reps, um, the amount of sets, the rest time, all this certain stuff, right? Um, athletes, right, and coaches, you could get burnt out with that, right? And your body will stop progressing because it adapts, right, to the specific um, load that you put on it. And if you don't change it up, it will stop adapting and you'll go the opposite way, okay? So don't forget variation. And ver reversibility, that's exactly what I just said. All right, so you'll start going the opposite way if you don't keep varying things. Okay, so with that, uh, that concludes this webinar. So here are those few references I talked to you about. So this first one here, strength training for endurance athletes, theory to practice, very good, out of the Strength and Conditioning Journal in 2015. This, um, uh, this gives you a very good approach, uh, practical of how and a very good example of how to periodize uh, strength training with endurance athletes. So definitely check that one out. Then uh, this one, this was that review article from last year, training and competition readiness and triathlon out of sports, uh, another peer reviewed journal. Um, and then finally, this one here, I thought was pretty good too. Uh, if you wanna look into that one, strength training and long distance triathletes, barriers and characteristics. So basically, um, talks a little bit about what barriers uh, athletes and coaches um, can uh, come up with, you know, for uh, strength training when trying to rationalize why they should be doing it and ways around those barriers. So that's another good read too. Okay, so that uh, concludes everything. So this is my contact information. Once again, I'm Coach Adrian Wolf. Feel free to reach out to me, all right? Uh, my email is coach.adrian16 at gmail.com and my business uh, website is www.wolffitcoaching.com uh, so I, I work with athletes remotely um, training them for uh, 
functional fitness and also uh, endurance training, uh, both runners and triathletes. So uh, if you have any questions or are interested in training or coaching, uh, please let me know. And uh, that's all I have for you. Thank you for listening today.